right, fans, we welcome you into another edition of Inside Boxing Live. I am your host, Dan Canobio. Thank you so much for joining us this week. If you're watching us over on YouTube, don't forget to subscribe to CompuBox TV. It's where we do a lot of our fight previews and post a lot of our videos. If you're listening on iTunes, thank you very much once again. Leave us a five-star rating and also leave us a review. Tell me how much you love the show. Tell me how much you love me. You can even tell me that you hate me. As long as you leave a five-star review, we can keep doing the show every single week. And finally, Fubo Sports Network. You can watch us every Thursday at 7 p.m. ET Eastern Time over on the Fubo Sports Network, a partnership that we are very excited uh, to bring you boxing every single boxing news every single week as boxing is getting back. Uh, getting into the swing of things. Joining me on the show this week, he's Karan Batia, host of the Ask the Experts podcast. We're going to get into what we have seen so far uh, from Top Rank. We are now two weeks in uh, to the summer series. We still have, uh, I think, four, three or four more shows to go in June before we get into what is a really jam-packed July. We're going to go very in-depth with what we're going to see in July. Some really some intriguing fights uh, in July. Also going to have some fun with this Dana White and Bob Arum beef that's going on. Have you guys been following this? Uh, these two are going at it despite being about 50 years uh, separated uh, between the two of them. A lot of stuff going on in boxing, a lot of stuff going on in the world, too. We're a little distraction here, but Inside Boxing Live with my man, Karim Batia. We're going to get into what we have seen so far with the top ranked schedule. Here it is. Okay, it is time to bring in my co-host for today's episode. You know him. He's Kerwin Bate. He's the host of Ask the Experts podcast, former HBO boxing producer, all-around great guy, still gutting it out in New Jersey, I see, from the background. Yes, sir. Still in New Jersey, uh, waiting for the right time to go back to New York City, but uh, a lot of fireworks going on right now, right, Dan? <laughs> I didn't get a lot of sleep last night, so this should be an interesting <laughs> show uh, as we tape this New York is insane right now. There are fireworks going off until about 3, 4 in the morning. And we're not talking about bottle rockets either. We're not talking about <laughs> stuff you get at like 7-Eleven or maybe something that falls off a truck. I'm talking like full Macy's, Gucci style going off all over the streets. A lot of conspiracy theories on, on Twitter. I don't <laughs> want to talk about it anymore. I want to talk about boxing because we are in the thick of it, Kern. We are now yeah. in the thick of this summer series on Top Rank. We've seen two weeks of fights uh, every Tuesday and Thursday, we've seen some good fights. We've seen some bad fights. We've heard all the criticisms. We've we've seen fighters, you know, taking uh, this opportunity and cashing in. We've also seen some bad things in terms of maybe the crowd noise app. What the heck is going on with that thing? But there's <laughs> been a lot going on in the last two weeks in boxing. We've finally seen some fights. We're kind of getting like an idea of what this uh, summer series is going to look like in terms of the protocols. I think there's going to be better fights coming up. Uh, in July, we're going to talk, talk a little about that uh, later on in the show. But, you know, so far, it's been a, a mixed bag, but I, I think more good than bad, considering what it takes to, to put on these types of events. First of all, did you say conspiracy theories on Twitter? Wow. Okay. Believe it or not. That. Believe it or not. <laughs> Believe it or not. That's crazy. But yeah, no. theories. But to your point, let's talk about boxing. It, we've been saying this for the whole time. It's a monumental effort just to get a normal boxing show with normal production. When you look at everything going on in the world, it's been a Herculean effort by top rank Brad Jacobs and the team. We talked about this on the last show. Uh, now we're starting to see some trends, things that are working, things that are not working. You mentioned uh, Hear Me Cheer. Uh, I like the initiative. I like the innovative thinking. I don't think it works. I think I'd rather just hear the the trainers yelling instructions. And then we're, of course, going to talk about the Mexico City show where Mexico had their own protocols. Um, they had not hear me cheer, see me cheer. Yeah, let's talk uh, about we this had, now. And we had what people did. What, what it was? Uh, you said it was a woman who looked like she was in her tailor shop uh, cheering on fighters, right? Yeah, I tweeted this out. I mean, Saturday night on ESPN at 11 o'clock, I, I was my favorite show just because of the sheer entertainment. Listen, this is kind of like what I want out of this. Yes, I want safety protocols, and I love what they're doing at the bubble, but this to me was like boxing in 2020 embodied right there in Mexico City, Azteca uh, Studio, which you said you've been to. I mean, it looked amazing from the outside. Walking in, it looked like you were walking the red carpet of an Oscar event. But once you stepped into the ring and you looked behind the ring, there was this giant TV. And on the TV, there was these like pre-recorded, what I think is friends and families of the fighters, you know, cheering, going crazy. Didn't exactly match what was going on in the ring. It was unbelievable. I had to tweet it out. But then you look over at the camera guys. The camera guys were wearing full like breaking bad hazmat suits you, you the, the the refs were wearing masks right up until the 
the, the fighters were actually wearing masks right up until the fight actually the first bell rang. You had Julio Cesar Chavez, who was part of the commentating booth for for the Me- the Mexican uh, t- uh, TV companies. They were in like their own booths. It looked like they were at the DMV. Like you went up there and you you figure out if you were getting your license plate or not. It was insane. Like just watching that on Saturday night was crazy. And it all you know came to a head with uh, Emmanuel Navarrete with another. It wasn't even a title defense, but I think the the fights were were secondary. To me, I was tuning in to see just the sheer entertainment of it. Totally. It was all about the experience. We talked about the bubble in Las Vegas having that nightclub atmosphere. I tweeted out that the in Mexico City, it was more of the red carpet award show atmosphere. There was actually a red carpet. Yeah. And I actually give props to uh, everyone putting that together. I think that's what PBC tried to do in the beginning. They wanted one fighter walking alone on the ring walk. It looked pretty cool. Um, you mentioned the cameraman in, in hazmat suits, fighters with masks on. It looked like uh, one of the early fighters was ready to, to go ahead with the mask on. They had to remind yeah. Take it off. Yeah, take it off. The, ju- the judges had to be remote. That's different, right? We haven't had that before. Um, I, I want to congratulate them on at least taking it, it seriously. You saw these face coverings, these hazmat suits, these plexiglass. Um, but the fans in the background, as I, I think it's it has to be a little bit distracting or disturbing, right? You're right. you're trying to fight a guy and there's a giant screen with someone cheering. I don't know. I think that would be a little distracting for me if I was a fighter. Right, like you're, you're biting down on your mouth guard. You're <laughs> you're going in for like a heated exchange. Maybe you're you're a prospect that's looking to move forward, and at the corner of your eye, you see your grandma in the closet of her job cheering you on. That's a little distracting. That's a little distracting. But we move forward here, and uh, I'm going to talk about some of the fighters or some of the fights that we've seen so far that I think have been positives, and I think that these fighters have cashed in it. And there is no fighter right now that has cashed in more than Clay Collard. We saw him in February or earlier in the year where he upset a, another undefeated fighter. He did so again at David Kaminsky in the last top-ranked show, uh, who was a 25-0 and prospect. Clay Collard took him out. This guy has a crazy story. Fought in the UFC for a number of fights. I think over maybe 15 to 20 fights uh, in the UFC. Has now beaten, I think, three straight undefeated fighters. They call him the, the prospect slayer. Now this guy, people are, t- I've seen crazy things on Twitter, not just fireworks stuff, but people calling for Clay Collard to, to, to become maybe fighter of the year. I saw one guy tweet, but just people are on board. This just shows you if you take fights it, during this pandemic or during this bubble boxing, and you cash in and you give a, a good effort, there's going to be a following for you. You're going to make something out of this. No, Clay Collard, absolutely. He, he had uh, unorthodox angles for boxers. There's the one series where he's throwing punches, just hitting air. It's almost like that, uh, you know, when you lie on the resume, but get the job anyway. But he, you know what? At the end of the day, he put on a fan-friendly performance and we hope to see him again. Mike Plania had the big win against Greer. That was another good one. Gabriel Flores with his win at 50% capacity. Um, another win-lose. I think Tim Bradley is is going to be polarizing in terms of these broadcasts. He's had a couple good stories in terms of uh, the car getting pulled over, the the, the, the tensions going on in the world. I thought he really nailed that. The story about the remote with the batteries, Dan, I don't know if you saw this. I'm not sure if that one hit in the same way. Um, so a lot of fighters doing well, and we're seeing a lot of fighters, a lot of type showcase type fights, especially how it started off with Shakur Stevenson and others. No, I, I do like, I'm glad you brought up Bradley because I, I think you're seeing the wide spectrum of, of, of Tim Bradley, like, <laughs> in, like stories that are kind of quirky you know, obviously the stories with the, the Black Lives Matter and the whole racist stuff, that was that was good stuff. But then you have him just straight up saying, this fight stinks. Like, he, there was a heavyweight fight last week. There was that sloppy one. And he said, this is the worst heavyweight fight I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> like, I miss those, like, really candid, you know, uh, you know, commentating from some of these analysts because a lot of times they will try to shill or a lot of times they'll try to hype up the event when it's really not that good of a fight. But I, I've been liking Tim Bradley. I think he's been he's been nailing everything. He's very um, you know controversial on here. Another really good fight was the Adam Lopez Luis Correa fight. That fight had over fifteen hundred uh, thrown punches combined uh, from those two. So as you can see, there are some fighters that are are really cashing in on on this. And you're gonna see Clay Coward in July. You're gonna see some of these guys come back and fight in July. So if you fight a six round fight and you come out generally unscathed, you're gonna move forward too. But also with the protocol as well. We're seeing some things on how this is working. This seems like it's something that's kind of going to evolve as the, as the months go on. I think that uh, other promotions are kind of taking notice or looking how Top Rank is handling this. Three uh, positive tests: Michaela Mayer, uh, one of them; uh, Mikhail Lapierre's train or manager uh, was one of them as well. And there was also uh, another fight that got scrapped. So Top Rank is is really you know 
is doing the right thing when it comes to the test. They're not, even if it's a main event, even if it's the manager of a fighter, if they test positive, fight is off, you're going to have to deal with the consequences. Yeah, they're they're learning from this. They're making some changes. As you mentioned, Mikhail LePierre's manager was the one, and, and that's, that's specifically heartbreaking because he actually was in the front lines in New York City. He worked really hard to not get COVID, but to help people because he had a baby daughter at home. And at the last minute, that fight was taken away. Hopefully, those that fight will be rescheduled for July. Michaela Myers' uh, fight will be rescheduled for July. It's a learning process. This is what we expected. And as we've been saying, top ranked ESPN are doing a great job with the bubble. Yeah, so that you caught up at late Pierre. I hope he gets back. I think they said July 14th they're going to reschedule a fight. That's easy to do. And hopefully he can spar now. Maybe the gyms are starting to open here in New York. After the break, we're going to come back with Kern. We're going to talk about some fights that are coming up in July because the July schedule is looking pretty good. We are back here inside Boxing Live. Now, Kern, the schedule in July, I can't tell if it looks so great because June was light or because it actually we have some competitive fights here on the schedule. We're going to see something other than ESPN and Top Rank coming back. The return of The Zone and the return of PBC on Fox. Neither have been confirmed as of yet, but it, there was a lot of rumors circulating around. We'll start off with the 24th on The Zone. We're not going to see Ryan Garcia as he had a, another uh, spat with Oscar De La Hoya. We're going to see Virgil Ortiz fighting on the 24th against Samuel Vargas, a fight that was originally supposed to happen in March. On the 25th on Fox, not confirmed, but heavily rumored, we're going to see Jamal James going up against Thomas DeLorme. These are two fights that are not top rank related that I'm looking forward to because these are some two really good fights. Yeah, once one promotion or network figures it out in terms of how to make it safe and we all kind of see what's happening, we all figure out what's going on in the bubble, other people will follow and that's hopefully what's going to happen in July. It's also, as you mentioned, hopefully we'll start to see more competitive fights. It was almost like when this first started up in June, it's like, let's just get these fights out there. It could be showcase type fights. Um, people may fall out because of positive tests. Now it's like, all right, let's start getting some, some good fights in here. And we talked about Michaela Meyer making her comeback hopefully in July. Uh, Mikel Lapierre we talked about Virgil Ortiz as you mentioned I think it was Steve Kim who gave him the nickname low maintenance because mm -hmm. compared to what's going on with the uh, Ryan Garcia and the, and the whole contract demands we're going to see him back uh, tested against Vargas so it's good fights and it, I, I think it's good for everyone that other networks and, and everyone else is, is getting back into boxing right you know this July schedule it reminds me of what used to be the January schedule before when it was just HBO and Showtime. These are fights that are, are somewhat competitive. They're going to set up for bigger fights later on in the year. Uh, there wasn't so many. There wasn't a lot of expectations for fights in January. This is pre, like, the zone, pre, you know, ESPN getting involved. I think it's a good thing. I think we're going to see more fighters. And someone had to be first, and that's top rank. And now we're seeing the zone get in there. In terms of Virgil Ortiz that you brought up, this guy was a prospect of the year. This is a guy that could potentially have a better and longer career than Ryan Garcia. He will take the pay cut or whatever. The you know He won't haggle over money. He'll take the exposure, like we talked about in the last segment, with more fighters willing to fight and go in there. And it's a good fight against Samuel Vargas. But some other fights schedule two of going back into top rank Ivan Baranchik versus Jose Sabata is going to be a fight that I think will be flames I think both guys throw a lot of punches both guys are looking back into the title mix at 140 pounds really like that fight too Jamel Herring is coming back on July 2nd two days before the 4th of July he's the fighting marine I like him in that fight too then we get start getting into the the meat of, of July and I bring up meat for a reason Jarrell Miller is back <laughs> Big Baby going up against Jerry Forrest on July 9th. A lot of controversy swirling around this. How do you feel about Big Baby getting back in the ring? Yeah, a lot of people are not necessarily super pumped about Big Baby Miller coming back. I mean, he was popped for PDs, as we know. He had the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to fight Joshua. He couldn't do it. That led to Ruiz beating Joshua, as we know. Um, I think it's going to be an interesting test against Forrest. Forrest says, uh, quote, I'm going to box his shoes off. Uh, hey. <laughs> Cool. I want to see that. Uh, I think it'll be interesting to see what Big Baby has left. Is this a different version of Big Baby, right? Or is this going to be the same guy that we saw before? Uh, he's got the high knockout percentage, but he's also a bigger guy that can move a little bit, try to box uh, box with you. So it, it's been a long time off for him, and I'm interested to see what he'll be like uh, when he comes back. Well, I think that fight's going to do big ratings just from the curiosity thing. I mean, you can talk about, you know, should he be in the ring? Should, should he have – had a longer suspension we know the rules of boxing you know the, the loopholes that got him back uh into the ring is it right that he got rewarded with a huge contract from top rank after 
failing three drug tests in the fight that you just brought up with Anthony Joshua remains to be seen. But I tell you what, people are going to tune in to curiosity. People are going to tune in to watch him get starched. They're going to want to see that. Another big fight coming up in July is Alito Alvarez versus the pride of Long Island, Joe Smith. <laughs> This is a, a, a WBO eliminator in the light heavyweight division. That's a really good fight. I think that fight right there uh, is going to steal the show as well. No, I'm actually really looking forward to that one. That's two really tough guys who both want to have a win, right? They both really need to have a big win. And I'm really looking forward to that fight. That's another one that's postponed. It'll also be interesting to see how a lot of these fighters make these adjustments. A lot of the fights we're talking about were scheduled for March or April, and they were pushed back now. Did these guys keep training? Did they take time off? Because that brings up concerns about overtraining, undertraining, right? Every Everything is different now that we had this pause. And wait a minute, Dan, we can't end this segment without talking about uh, John Jones versus Mike Tyson. Isn't that uh, isn't that uh, one of the rumors? Is that the Tyson that uh, Tyson's doing that like FaceTime interview from his bed? And it was like the most revealing Tyson interview in years. Just shows you that Ty- Mike Tyson is just the guy's amazing. He just there's do like thirteen different people with their names attached to a Mike Tyson fight right now. I think a fifty three year old Mike Tyson. We should add <laughs> and, a, and a movie too as well. One last fight I want to bring up before we move on to the next segment is Oscar Valdez going up against Jason Velez. Not confirmed yet. I like this fight a lot. V- Velez is a uh, is game. He's a veteran and will show where uh, Oscar Valdez is right now at 130 pounds because I think it'll be a second or third fight uh, with, with Andy Reynoso. Let's end it here. We go move into a next segment about when fans will return. Is it going to be safe? Will the fans show up to these arenas even in 25% capacities? Not a lot of beefs going on in the boxing world between boxers versus boxers. We're getting promoters versus promoters and, and other sports. Dana White going after Bob Arum and, and vice versa. This all is on the heels of Bob Arum saying that for the bigger fights to happen, the Wilder Furies, the uh, Lomachenko versus Teofimo Lopez, the fights that we all want to see, in order for these to happen, there has to be some type of fans in attendance, whether it's an outdoor arena and they're socially distanced or whether it's an indoor arena and they're going to have to be socially distanced no matter what. There has to be some type of crowd, some type of live gate for these to happen. I bring up Dana White because once he got wind of it, he went off, off the rails on, on Aram. And I don't know where I stand exactly on the beef between Aram and, and uh, Dana White, Karen, because, you know, Aram did start it by saying that he thinks that the UFC was too quick to go in there. Then you got Dana White calling him names, you know, calling him expletives. And, and you know, I understand he's an older guy. He accomplished a lot in his career. How about a little bit of respect, Dana? <laughs> You wanted to put some respect on his name, huh? Um, yeah, you know what? It's it's interesting because both of these entities, uh, Top Rank Boxing and UFC, had to come back in these challenging times. They both did. But you see Dana White kind of calling uh, Aram a bleeping genius when he saw the uh, the ratings for the Top Rank Boxing. They weren't that good. Uh, kind of poking fun at him a little bit. Um, I, I get Aram's point because... Such a big part of the financial part of these huge fights is the live gate, right? You can make so much money selling these tickets, millions and millions of dollars, and that plays into the financial model. So how can you have these massive events without those fans? Now, we can't have the same amount of fans without it being safe, like you said, socially distanced, outdoors, outdoor arenas. Will fans come back when it's safe? I say yes. I think people are are ready to come back. If you look at, you know, things going on in other states like Vegas right now, there's people in the casinos at the pool, things like that. I'm pretty sure if those people are boxing fans, they're going to come back to see fights. If fights are happening, the question is, will it be safe for them to do so? That that's what we have to figure out. Yeah. It's, I can see it happening outdoors. They're talking about the Raiders stadium. And I mean, it starts to get cold in Vegas around October, November. So they, they're kind of on borrowed time when it comes to that. But you can say, listen, we'll do it at Raider Stadium. It fits 80,000, 25% do the math, and you have a smaller crowd. You can say you want to do that, but will the fans show up? That's what we have to see. And I think it's going to go dependent on state. If you did it in New York, I don't think you're going to get a huge crowd because this was the epicenter for a while, and people are on edge, and they're also taking it more serious. Go over to Vegas, like you said. We saw that video of people walking through casinos. I have a friend in Vegas. You know, he says that, you know, masks are an afterthought here. People are just want to get back to normal. I'm interested to see because it's a it's a sport that it's been having declining attendance to begin with. Uh, There was a lot of issues on going to a fight. You know, the, the, the undercards are usually not that great. Uh, there's a lot of time in between fights. Usually the fights aren't, aren't that competitive either until the main event. Or Not to mention that we are in a, a, a financial time for the people. You have 
hundred fifty sixty thousand million. I don't even know what this, the numbers are anymore in terms of unemployment. Are people going to be forking down cash to go see a fight <laughs> when they have other bills and stuff? There's a lot of factors go into this, but I think it's going to you're not going to see these big fights in the U.S. unless there are going to be fans involved. Yeah, I mean, if it was slow in terms of moving the cards along before, now you have even more protocols, right? You got to wipe down the uh, the ring, wipe down surfaces, things like that. So it might be even uh, even slower. I think uh, one thing that we we can both agree on is that maybe fans will go to the actual fight. They're probably not going to go to the overflow uh, fight seating, right? <laughs> I see you there. I see you there. Well, now, sixty two hundred fans in attendance for uh, of that rally over there in, in Tulsa. Uh, it's, it is a telltale sign. I don't know what exactly went into that, but will fans show up? But back to this Aram and, and Dana White thing. It's really, it's really annoying me because I don't know where. Yeah. Like, on one hand, Aram started it, but I understand he's close to ninety years old. But show some respect, a little bit of respect from, from Dana White. Also on the same same network there. I think that if you poke Dana White, he's gonna come at you and he was like flexing in the video and he was <laughs> he was like talking to Aaron about how how he's an idiot and how he's an a-hole it was so strange it's it's a little unfair because if you look at Dana White he obviously works out you know he's more in his physical prime and poor Bob Aram 88 years old now in a war of words though I think they're still very evenly matched you probably even give the uh give the nod to Aram there because he's been doing this for a long time but to your point I mean these guys are both doing the same thing bringing back combat sports so let's have a little bit of mutual respect let's hope we get fans in there and until then I guess it's going to be grandma from the tailor shop uh cheering these people on <laughs> highlight of my 2020 uh, was being in Vegas for Wilder Fury and cheersing and having a, an Amstel light with with Bob Aaron. That was that was that was something else. But uh, as after we come back, we'll wrap up the show. I got a little talk about some Tyson movie rumors. Uh, we're coming right back at the end of Inside Boxing Live. All right, Karen. Before we say goodbye, another week of Inside Boxing Live. Mike Tyson. Dominating the headlines once again. We brought up this John Jones uh, rumor. Also, this this movie with with Jamie Foxx. Something I've heard about years ago. I remember Jamie Foxx was on some radio station in, in New York City where he like did the Im- impression and he was talking about how the movie was going to begin and it kind of fizzled out. But you have to feel like some producers are like, listen, Mike Tyson is like still in the headlines. He's breaking the internet with these <laughs> comeback videos. Let's get this movie going. I think it's gonna be a really good movie. Yeah, I mean, now is the time, right? And we saw the picture of Jamie Foxx bulking up. I mean, who better to play Mike Tyson? Uh, definitely looking forward to that. But to your point, I mean, he's always in the news. There's so many people who want to fight him, even at, at his age now. Uh, there's a lot of rumors, things going on. Who knows? People are talking about uh, full-time rapper Adrian Broner maybe coming back, right? Right, Broner. <laughs> that's something we didn't get to. I'm glad you brought it up. Is that this fight between Pro Gray and Hooker looks like it's going to be off over money and over weight. I, I think that progress should do everything to the, get in the ring because I feel like he's someone that uh, can maximize the exposure now. But now progress is talking about Broner coming into the mix. No way Broner's getting down to 140, even 143. Broner is walking around right now close to 200 pounds. It's crazy. We got more stuff to talk about. Current, thank you so much for joining us here on Inside Boxing Live. We'll be back next week with another edition as we get into the middle of the summer. More boxing is on the way. Thank you so much for joining another edition of Inside Boxing Live.